Hello, Resurrection students, it's Leah, and I wanna tell you a little story about when I was in school, I used to pride myself on my ability to know a lot of people. Uh, I also carried that into college and into my career, and then recently, I ran into an old friend, and, and I remembered that I knew them, but I, I couldn't remember how. And we chatted like, like we'd knew, known each other, and uh, it wasn't until after the conversation that I realized where I knew her from. And I, I had bits and pieces from social media uh, that I was drawing upon, but looking back now, I realized that I didn't really know her. I just kind of knew about her. And looking back on my life, I actually realized that I knew very few people. I just knew about a lot of people. And there is a huge difference between knowing about people and really knowing people. Now, it's no surprise that uh, social psychology says that actually knowing someone requires personal knowledge from being with someone over time and time again, you know, building up a, a level of trust so that they'll let you in. And knowing about someone is, is just the first step toward actually knowing them. Take social media, for example. On my Instagram, this is what I have written about myself. It says, I am an actor, mother, teacher, pastor, LGBTQ plus ally, lover of sports, adventures, and a life abundantly filled with grace. There, now you know me. Well, you know about me, a little. But it would take time, invested conversations, and a lot of interest to know me. And that goes for all of you too, right? We need to engage in conversation. It takes a little time to know each other. It's the same way with God. And thankfully, God has gone to extremes to make himself known to us. God does this through nature, prayer, music, you name it. And most importantly, through Jesus and the life of Jesus we read about in the Bible. Now, on social media, we put our representation of ourselves out there, and, and people can have a lot of opinions on what they may or may not like about us, or about a celebrity or a public figure. Now, a lot of people in Jesus' time had opinions about his ministry and who he was. But what did Jesus himself tell us about who he is? Jesus gives us seven I am statements about who he is and why he came into the world. And this helps us to get a fuller understanding of the character of Jesus, what his mission was, and how we can have a more full and complete relationship with God through Jesus. Jesus was especially self-revealing in his I am statements, more so than my I am statements on social media. His statements explain the character and nature of God through significant phrases that all begin with, I am. These are not Jesus' only statements about himself, but they stand out in a unique way. They show us that the God of the universe is not just some mysterious voice behind a curtain or some old guy sitting on a cloud. Through Jesus, we know that God is relational and we can know God personally. God is Emmanuel, which means God with us. So the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, found at the beginning of the New Testament, they give us most of these I am statements, and specifically in the book of John. In the book of John, we dive even deeper into Jesus revealing his nature and character by working miracles and making the following seven descriptive statements about himself that all have real implications for all of humanity. One, I am the bread of life. Two, I am the light of the world. Three, I am the gate of the sheepfold. Four, I am the good shepherd. Five, I am the resurrection and the life. Six, I am the way, truth, and life. Seven, I am the true vine. These statements shout out truth about God's character 
I am love, good, life-giving, trustworthy, a, a compass, the path to everlasting life, a true friend always, and my favorite, light of the world. One of my favorite I am statements is found in John 8, where some of the religious leaders who did not like Jesus were trying to trip him up on his teachings. We read that the religious leaders brought this woman who they found committing adultery and took her to Jesus asking, hey Jesus, we found this woman doing something super bad. Should we stone her? Instead of responding immediately, Jesus squatted down and started writing in the sand. He was just quiet. The religious leaders kept shouting out different allegations, asking Jesus, hey, shouldn't we kill this woman? Jesus stood back up and said, whoever hasn't sinned should throw the first stone. And then he quietly kneeled back down and started writing in the dirt. John tells us that all these religious leaders, both young and old, immediately started feeling the sense of conviction and realizing that they were not without sin. So how could they judge? And one by one, they all left. And the only ones left were Jesus and this woman. Jesus looked up and asked the woman, where are those accusers of yours? Is there no one to condemn you? And she said, no one, sir. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, don't sin anymore. After that, Jesus spoke to the people saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have light of life. What I love about this is that even in the darkest of times, when we feel like everyone is out against us and, and maybe we've hit a low, or, or, or maybe we've been super judgmental and our attention has been on what everybody else is doing wrong and, and not on how we can do better, Jesus reminds us of his character that he is here to be the light in the world. And, and just like with this woman and with the hypocritical religious teachers, Jesus reminds them that he makes a way in the darkness. We don't have to keep doing things that bring pain to our lives or to other people's lives. We have the light of the world in Jesus. And really what that means is hope. We have the greatest hope of all. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, if any of you have been in complete darkness, say the lights go out in your home and, and you can't see anything, or, or maybe you're outside in the dark camping and, and there's no moon, you're just complete darkness. And you can feel pretty scared and unsafe and, and nervous. But when someone turns on a flashlight or a lamp or, or a candle, hope flickers inside of you you can now see your path or, or what's around you, even in the smallest way. When Jesus says he's the light of the world, he is showing us that he is hope. And unlike a candle or batteries in a flashlight, Jesus is the light that never goes out. In Pastor Adam's book, John, the Gospel of Light and Life, he tells us that Jesus came to be the light for us so that we, as his followers, might in turn be the light for others. If we are called to be light in the world, how does your character give hope to those around you? How do you find hope in Jesus? And perhaps there's another I am statement that really speaks to you. Read through them and ask yourself, how does my character show the life of Jesus into the world? When you think of these I am statements and how they reflect the character of Jesus, ask yourself how well you might have thought you knew Jesus before and how much more you can know him now. Just like social media can show just a, a small portion of who we are or how we can go through life thinking we know people but really we just know about them, ask yourself how you can not just know about Jesus, but really know Jesus as you keep studying about his character and showing his light into the world.